Hey guys, BBI here. I want to stop and say thanks thanks for tuning in and checking out whatever the video is about that's about ready to come up next. If you could take a minute and hit subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you enjoy what you've seen here, make sure to hit the like button. We'd greatly appreciate your support. Anyhow, guys, all that aside, let's get on with the show. Well, my friends, welcome back. If this is your first time watching, hey man, I appreciate you coming by, hanging out, checking out what's going on. If you uh, are coming back around for another view of this stuff to follow along with the saga, I say thank you, you're a Pete offender, and I enjoy your returning uh, viewage. I guess would be the best way to put it. Make sure to click subscribe. Guys, remember every single hour of this video that you guys get to watch represents roughly five to six hours worth of work in the back end. And that's downloading and transferring the files, that's me dealing with it in the computer, rendering it into a 4K video for you guys, uploading to YouTube, then getting all the stuff in the background to get it to all jive the same language and then releasing it for your visual consumption. So please, for the love of God, take a minute, click subscribe, and let's follow along because let's not forget one, it's almost impossible to find a YouTube channel to where they don't start the YouTube channel by saying, What up, guys? Because they can't think of anything else original to say. And two, it's almost impossible to find a YouTube channel that isn't going to shove 50,000 ads down your throat <clears throat> trying to bolster their revenue stream on AdSense. And three, it's almost impossible to find a YouTube video anymore that doesn't have somewhere in it. Today's sponsor of this YouTube video is followed with a three to five minute worth of ad to pay for the content. I'm a little grassroots company, you guys. I'm pretty big in, as far as visual presence on the interboobler, but um, <clears throat> I'm a one man band. So the thumbs up really helped drive the search engine and help me get more views. I'm just a little grassroots operation. I have no sponsorship with anybody. I'm really proud to say that Harbach was willing to help sponsor this video as in far as they were willing to help give us the right components to make this thing go. But I have not received any compensation from anyone nor will I ever in the process of doing this. I have thought multiple times about doing a Patreon channel, but blah, 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 let's get back to working. So. You just got done enduring an hour and 43 minute video, and the only thing that we got out of that was making this board. <clears throat> well, guess what? More of the same. <laughs> this, according to the manual, is the last thing that we're gonna need to open. This is our plate transformer. So, let's go over here to the other side of the room, and let me show you what I got going on over here. So this is where we started out in our previous video segment was these four little pouches of parts and it dawned on me that I'm not going to have enough lay down space for all of these parts to lay them out appropriately so I asked my, my, my good friend my neighbor Joe who's also my vinyl guy um, that brings over all of these tables every year I don't know where they come from or why he's got to have so many of them but I said hey man can I borrow a couple of your tables so this is one of the tables he brought over and we are going to sit down, I'm going to sit down, and I'm going to lay out all of these parts so we've got a visual index of what we're working with.
This has been an interesting day, not only for my business, but the, uh, the country to watch this, this thing unfold. I, I can't tell you, I've had a lot of people tell me, um, thank God they can't stand watching the electoral results anymore. And that is officially as close as you'll ever get me to talk about politics ever, right there in a quick little breath. I uh, <clears throat> make it a very strong policy to not get involved in politics, religion, race, any of that stuff. None of that holds any interest to me. It's a giant emotional mental waste. Um, okay, a couple things. So really interesting. I spent my day um, talking with people and, and listening to other people's opinions about certain things. Um, there is a, quite a few opinions on lots of different things. Going to need you. Come here. I have right here um, a very pristine, completed. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Let me slide down here and let's take a quick look for. Her. Two, three, four. Okay. So this is a complete band kit. All right. Not crazy. This is a complete <clears throat> and very good condition band kit without having to go through and do all the nightmarish stuff that we'd have to do to modify this, which would involve, and believe me, there's a part of me that wants to do this to see what's going on underneath this seal. I just know it's just going to be some inductors and some chokes and shit. This is um, how they keep you from transmitting above 25 megahertz. We have this kit down here. We have this kit down here. We're going to use some parts out of this. Um, we're going to use that back band switch. And we're going to use a tank coil and a couple other things. So... <clears throat> There's quite a few people that want me to do all the mods to this, and I feel very strongly that I don't want to do that. I'm, I, I am going to make some changes with this, though, just based on safety. Uh, this coax is out for sure, and so is this. We're going to we're gonna send these with the amp, but um, I can't in good conscience use this low-end, low-grade coax even though I'm sure it'll work just fine. I'll feel much, much, much comfortable, much more comfortable myself if we use stuff like this, this indestructible RG400. And then I got a big giant, like 500 foot roll RG393 over here, which we're gonna use um, to replace this. We'll use, this is RG8U. Incredibly lossy, not very tolerant to heat. The other thing, you know what, I'll come back to that, because we're going to get onto that here in a minute. Let's just go ahead and let me walk you through the laydown process here so far. I wanted to go through after yesterday, I kind of got caught off guard with this stuff here. Uh, it seemed like I was a little bit discombobulated with what was in what package. Um, I found parts for the high voltage board out of this bag, this bag, and this bag. And instead of me just kind of being blind about it, um, I laid down yet another table and I laid out all the parts. So this is our back band switch. This is our front band switch. This is part of our tank coil. Here's our relay, um, our aftermarket badges. When I identified these, when we first opened them, I thought they were tuners because when I see uh, Johnson, the biking company, I immediately assume tuner. They're the ones that made the original sockets. These sockets are in absurd condition. Beautiful. So far, everything in this kit has been either a 10 out of a 10 or a plus 10 or a plus 15 or a plus 25 in quality. Like, this kit is beyond mint. <clears throat> beyond mint, in my opinion. So we'll keep on going down here. Here's our meters out of the box. Everything that 
was in a box that came out and literally laid out in front of the box. Here's our filament choke, our big knob set, our small knob sets over there in a bag. Here's our filament transformer, um, our solid core wire. We got white wire. These solid core wires I am not going to use. And I'm going to cover that here in this next little segment, so we'll come back to that. Here's our air variables, which I, I can't even describe to you the quality of these things when they're new and they don't have three inches worth of cigarette jizz on them. I just, like this here, the, the lid, <clears throat> the top lid, I was just blown away, <clears throat> excuse me, I was just blown away with how clean this is because it's new right? I've never seen one of these that wasn't oxided white or didn't have a little bit of cigarette tinge to them. This thing is mint as mint gets. I've never seen one this nice and clean. Never. Never. So this is the front. It's delineated by the bend. And then we know that because of the cutout holes and the way that this is orientated. Then you have that back plate that comes across the back. But yeah, we'll get to all of that. I just wanted to lay it all out. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is I want to come back and I wanted to talk about these here. This is our Molex plug. And I don't have any pins for this yet. They're somewhere in here. And the only package that I haven't opened thus far for this or the only package I haven't opened yet is actually the plate transformer box. And hopefully the wires are in there to plug into that. But I've got myself pretty well wrapped around with what we're going to do now. I got a direction that I'm going to head. Um, <clears throat> and here's our Zener and a whole bunch of other stuff that we're going to use all of this, have faith. These chokes we're not going to use. And we've established over multiple YouTube videos why we don't and we'll cover that in even more detail when we go to install the sockets and so forth later on down the road. So enough talking, let's get over here and let's actually get some stuff done. Okay, so first things first, um, we're gonna make some changes to the kit. Instead of using the solid core wire, which is notorious for breaking, um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use Teflon and its equivalent size and strain count for uh, size. This is PTFE wire. We're going to use that off this board. This is the heavy blue, as they're asking for, and they want a nine and a half inch long heavy blue wire and a two and three fourths inch long heavy blue wire. This is the heavy blue wire that's provided with the kit. We're not going to use this for our high voltage wire. Um, this is just regular old oil based wire, and the problem is it's so old. <coughs> Being that it's 50 plus years old, that wire, I don't trust it. So we're going to go with some heavy, not not heavy, this is actually really light. When I, when, I, when I think heavy, I think like that's high voltage wire or even better yet, this stuff here, 100 kV stuff. This is 40 kV wire here. This is 100 here. This is what I think of high voltage wire, not... Yeah, anyhow, so we're going to go with new modern stuff that I know doesn't have any little micro cracks in it from 50 years of age and won't leak any high voltage, even though the voltage that we're working with here is relatively low, all things concerned. That's another thing is I need a high pot tester, like a real one, like I need a real one. And I've got a bunch of retired engineers out there that I know have got a high pot tester sitting out in their garage or their shop or whatever and probably never going to use it again. If I had one, I would use it all the time. Constantly testing tubes and circuits and stuff, and I'd love to be able to come up here on camera and hook it up and be able to dial up, like get this SB220 all set up, then hook up to the circuit and whoosh, load the voltage up and see where our leakage breakdown is. I would love that. I don't have that tool. But I know somebody out there in YouTube land's got it and is willing to either share it with me, sell it to me, or make me a screaming deal on one. I need something that does like 10 or 15,000 volts. Um, a 4 and 5,000 volt high pot tester 
That's, that's too low in voltage for me. I need something much higher. And I'm not going to lie, when we go and we look on the, the great eBayer, Flea Bear, um, stuff that's above 5,000 volts, it's like you can go get a 5,000 volt high pot tester and it, it's, uh, you know, it's a couple hundred bucks where one that does 10,000 or 15,000 or hell, 20,000 volts would be great. Um, there's several thousand. I know this going in, I'm not blind. You know, I'm just saying, I know that there's some radio operator out there that's got one that probably hasn't used it in 10 years and probably, I pray, like this kit, would be able to pass it forward so it could go on to somebody that's gonna use it all the time. I would love to show you this piece of wire, let's say on a grounded plate, the grounded plate sitting here and then I load up this piece of wire and we can actually check our leakage, our breakdown leakage of this, this wire. And then be able to recertify it that yeah, it can hold 3000 volts. I would love that, but I don't have that tool. I just don't have that tool. And every single time I get an extra four or five grand laying around to where I can, oh, let's go buy this crazy thing. All of a sudden I've got to like, I don't know, put tires on the wife's car or whatever. So I know somebody out there has got the coolest of the cool that they can share with me. And I, and I think all of my other fellow YouTube viewers would be eternally grateful. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get this done. Um, I'm not doing check marks as I go. Yes, I'm reading all of this stuff as I go, but uh, I'm not check marking this as I go through the book. We're going to skip over. We're going to jump through the next couple pages because a lot of what we're getting, what they're explaining to us to assemble here, we already have it completed with this band switch. Yes, sir. So let's get going. I want to get some stuff done here. Enough talking. If you got a high pot tester, please, please reach out to me. Help me help everybody else. I'd love it. I'd really appreciate it. Um, the other thing is that we're going to do uh, heat shrink epoxy based booties on the end of all of our wires. It just makes it look prettier. Okay, ready? Go. Okay. <clears throat> Connect the black hookup wire to the to the circuit hole C. Done. Um, twist together the red and black wires. I'm not doing that. I know how those are going to go. Connect the black wire to circuit hole B. Done that. Connect the we're talking about these here, these wires here. Uh, connect the orange wire hooked up to there, and that's done. Yellow wire, that's done. Twist the wires together. Did that because I know how these are going to go. This goes around and actually hooks up to the front. And you guys, I'm making all these leads just a couple inch, extra inches longer. Um, you'll see why once we go to get this all fully installed. Um, the way that this kit is laid out, that the wires, if I laid the wires out the length that they want, um, they fit, but it's really short. And I like to have all my wires nice and just relaxed. Like this is our high voltage wire here that comes off the board and goes over to our pass through pin, our porcelain pass through pin. Well, if I was to cut at the stock two and three fourths of an inch, but this is three and three fourths of an inch, that extra little inch allows us to have a nice smooth bend radius to it instead of being pin wire tight. Uh, trim all excess links from the foil side of the board. Check a board that is obviously done. And uh, careful to inspect the foil side of the board on D and K. Letters start running the same. Make sure. Okay, we're done. Now page seventeen. So we're gonna move on. Um, we're gonna gloss over this little portion of the build once again, like I said, because let's put this over on our laydown table because we'll be coming back to it. <coughs> This is the part that they're wanting us to build up right now. But uh, I'm kind of half tempted to put this all together, to be honest with you. But this is the one we're going to actually use. It's already got all the modifications done to it. And the only thing we got to do then is go and add the, uh, well, the standoffs and a couple other little bits over here for the output band switch. But um, I am tempted to put this together. but. 
I think we're going to leave this just sit as it is stock and send all the pieces on with the kit and whoever ends up owning it they can have it but this thing will be fully modded and ready to go. The only thing I want to do now is I want to go in here and I want to change this, these pieces of coax. And we're going to change this out to RG400. Okay. This is our input RF. And this is our output RF. And we're going to change those around to different coaxes. But this in very meticulous detail shows us how to set up um, our 80 through uh, 10 meter, but in this, this one, 80 through 15. And this is our ultimate stop block for the anything above 15 meters. Take care not to cut the outer very, th very thin wires from removing the outside of the insulation. Push back the shield, then make it open, the inner shield, with a nail. <laughs> okay, pre-tin, pre-tin, solder, solder braid, and then solder this smooth, one half inch, two inches long approximately, 12 and a half inches long, So we're talking about this wire here. Okay. Um, let me retrofit this. We shall return. So I created one and I wanted to show you how I do this. Let's talk about coaxes for just a couple minutes. I'm sure you all have watched my YouTube video, RG400 to Coax of the Gods. This is literally, not figuratively, and I mean in every sense of the word, the best money can buy. This is M17, means military standard coax 17. This is made of Teflon and silver and um, little thoughts of Jesus were sprinkled into when they created this coax. God came down himself and said, it shall be this and we have produced it. This stuff is amazing. It's unbelievably tolerant to pretty much everything. UV exposure. I got a friend of mine that's going on nine years having this stuff on his truck. Nine years and not had any failures. This is uh, what they call an aircraft grade coax. It is, well, the shit. Just to put it mildly, there's literally nothing better in the market than this in this size this is the same size as the rg58 that we're pulling that we're replacing in here the same reducers the difference is this can handle maybe a couple hundred watts this can handle several thousand and if you don't believe me it's all i use for jumpers here on the workbench and you guys in our last 32 bill 32 pill video which is seven eight thousand watts or better no problem just saying so I want to make that lead about yay long how I go about doing this it's really quite cool I used to have this friend of mine he's gone on to be with uh, with God or whoever now his name is Gary Gary was a brilliant man. He was a rocket engineer, um, done a lot of different things. And he's the one that taught me how to work with this coax. What we're gonna do now is what they call cleaving. So like, have you guys ever wondered how all my coax joints all look perfect and pretty and smooth and the edges on them are like, I absolutely cannot stand to focus on a camera. The edges on my coax joints are all nice and pretty all the time and everything. Well, this is how we do it. Being that the silver is such a great um, solderable substance, 
we just solder to one side of the coax. And because we don't have to worry about melting it, which I'm going to give you an unbelievable demonstration of that here in just a second, we can just pour the heat on. Um, I know one guy that uh, works at a truck stop, is a friend of mine, his name is Zane, he puts these ends on with a torch when he's doing an install outside. And, you know, I'm talking like a torch, not, you know, map gas. Because he doesn't have to worry about the thing melting on him. So, I just score this all the way around. Just take a nice sharp razor blade and I score it. Just score it. Just scratch it. I'm not cutting it, just scratching it. Twist, twist, and it breaks all the way around. Now we come back with our soldering iron, and just touch it, and it slides right off. Remember um, when we go to a Chinese restaurant when we were all kids, all of us, going back to the 40s and so on? We would, uh, you'd, you'd get little cheap toys there when you go to get Chinese food and they had that thing that was the Chinese finger cuffs you stuff your fingers in both ends and it pulled down tight that's exactly what happens here with the solder it pulls down tight against the braid and then when you go to slide it off it doesn't want to go so you just tap it a little bit with the soldering iron and it slides right off well what the end result from that is a perfectly cleaned perfect cleaved joint And this inner jacket isn't damaged, marred, scored, scuffed, or anything. It's called cleaving. So, that's how we do that. Now this, we're going to take this silver plated, I bet this is nickel plated, hard drawn copper, and put a little hoopy in it. sure these are faced the same way they are draw that down nice and tight just like that We just pour the heat on. We can sit here and hold the heat on this for half an hour and it ain't going to hurt it. It's not going to hurt it. So let that get back to a solid. Yeah, about that long. That'll work. So now we've got two very cleaned up ends. Okay. Make sure we have a little solder flux or little bits of solder on the end of this. We'll come, we'll strip this back just a little bit. Now, in theory, this is where you would be done. But me, I like to make everything stupid pretty. We're going to add a little bit of heat, heat shrink base, or epoxy heat shrink base uh, coating on the end of it. And then we'll tin this wire so we don't have to worry about bumping it into nothing. Now, in the book, what they want us to do is pre cut the ends and split the fatizzle tizzles and the tips and stuff like this. We're not going to do that until we're ready to install it. We're just not going to even waste the precious moments of our life to do that. So those are our two pieces of replacement coax for our band switch. So let me go in here. And we'll take this one out. Okay, come on. Typical shit coax. I mean, if this is all I had to work with, I'd become like the G.I. Joe assassin of working with this, this old coax. I would have it down to where I could just fart on it in the right way and it would come off the way I needed it to for the application I was using it. 
but since I live in this other world called kick-ass land, thanks to all of you guys, I get to uh, not have to stress about those kinds of things. So let me grab a scrap piece of this, this 400 here. And let me give you a little demo. Okay. So now, you all see me do this many times on video. And it's impressive every single time I do it. Okay, so under the old Model T was the place she first showed it to me. It was big and black and she called it her crack, but it looked like a manhole to me. So I pulled out my old power pole and I began to stick it in her black manhole. As she began to scream, I poured on that cream in a color the old Model T. If I go and superheat this tip, as soon as I pull the flame away, it quits. See? See what I'm saying? Now, this is cheaper and it does work, don't get me wrong. And this piece that we just burned up is 50 years old. Okay, the, the plastics and stuff that are in here, yeah, it's, it's not even hot. Um, the plastics and stuff that are in this weren't developed by DuPont until much later. But this is vastly superior coax. This is dual shield, much less loss. The center conductor is a higher strand count. It's uh, oxygen-free, softer on copper that is then nickel-plated and then bashed, bathed in, in silver, so it's silver-plated on top of that, the center conductor and the shield. This is just nickel-plated, single-braid, um, polystyrene, whatever, 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 which is flammable. And when it's exposed to heat, the jacket is so soft and the braid and the dielectric are so soft that it causes lots of problems. So I feel very comfortable. This is almost like the consistency of wax, like off the side of a candle. It can't even smells like wax. It feels like wax too. It's probably got paraffins in it. Um, I know that if I send this amp out of here with these coax jumpers in it, it it's one less thing that I know can ever possibly fail the end customer. Or I just don't trust this stuff. I don't believe in this stuff. But I trust my life and I would believe in this. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Okay, <clears throat> so the only thing I have left to add is this point zero zero one disc capacitor. And it comes off this lead and it goes back to our metering board that we haven't built yet. I'm going to wait to install this. The book is saying put this in now. My brain and my experience is saying wait. Believe me, I won't forget it's there. But we have completed now very quickly and upgraded to make a little bit more reliable, in my opinion. Um, pages... 18 through 24. And these two pieces of coax will slip through a grommet in the deck. But that is exactly that. This can never break. Vibration will never get to it. It's done and done. Okay, I'm going to slide this aside. Now on page 25, we've gotten to page 24 over here in the book. Page 24 in a book, we're now completed with it. Let's go to manual here. Um, this is all done. And now let's go over here. So note, to avoid scratching front panel 
and meter surface, the following steps place a soft cloth on your work table. Okay. Refer to pictorials 2 1, illustration booklet page number 4 of the following steps. <sighs> Refer to uh, note before mounting the terminal strips on, uh, in the following steps, scrape away the paint around the hole, EB, EA, pardon me, EA, using the hardware supplied with the meter to install a three lug uh, thermal strip. So we're going to need the three lug. this, some hardware, and our meters, and our faceplate badge, and our blockers. So, or our, our um, push-on nuts, let me uh, start digging out all the hardware to make this happen. <laughs> Remember in the first segment where I was talking about the Legos from China, and how the Legos in China, they come and the bags aren't very well labeled and they don't make any sense. Um, I just spent the last like 30 minutes looking for all the pieces to make this happen. And if you look in the diagram in the book here, my brain like had a little meltdown because I've been through every freaking bag and every single thing that we have <laughs> that I, th I thought. I'm like, where's the light element attachments? I haven't seen those, right? My little mental keeper in my head, I'm like, um, I know I have this pot. So I just went through everything again. You're not going to believe where they were at. And, and we've also solved another mystery too. We'll come back around to that. Only Heath kid. This is the original badge. This is a chromed badge um, for an SB221. We're going to slide that away and we're going to put this back over with the kit. And we're going to put it back in the bag it came out of, the little paper bag. File that away. Now, our stock faceplate, we're not going to even get that out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, that's what the faceplate also looks like without three inches of freaking cigarette grime on them. There's a moment in every ant builder's life where he realizes he gets to wake up and go, I am today officially a man. And today, in this very moment, Out of all the other things I've accomplished, pale in comparison to this moment right here. Beep. There, I'm completed as an individual. I'll sleep better tonight. <laughs> okay. Actually, that's, that's a really special moment. That's a really special moment. I just hope I can keep it this pristine when we slide the armor on. That it's okay. I got uh, I got some Teflon, not Teflon, but uh, some nylon-based tape that we can put around this that'll help protect it. So the search, the hunt, back to the riddle. I finally said, well, I can't find the hardware for the meters either. Maybe it's in the meter box. This is our plate amp meter. Look what's on the back of the meter. Our light assemble, assemblage. 
And then I go to look down inside of here and I'm like, oh, the hardware. Well, let me slide this out. Nope, the hardware is in this little baggie right here. What's in this little bag? Why would we stuff it inside the meter box? I don't know. Oh, look, it's the pins for our plug that we couldn't find and we spent an hour looking for yesterday. <laughs> oh, lordy. Lordy, 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 lordy. All right, we found our parts. That's all that matters. Now, I've got to use my official paper. Let's go over here. Let's get our official sandpaper. Now we're going here. We're going to use this hole. Stupid microfiber. Well, we don't want to scratch it, BBI. Okay. Going right here. got to do. Now, this plug that, or this, uh, this three lot slot connector that we're getting ready to install, this is what carries the 110 volts up here that powers the lights. This guy right here. Let me install it. So it's facing like this, I have discovered. Just me. Um, this is gonna be our right driver. Yes, okay. Sure would have never cut that fingertip off. It makes fine work like this a challenge because this fingertip is dead. It doesn't feel a whole awful lot. And it makes it really hard for swiping stuff too. For some reason it doesn't work with touch screens anymore. I don't, I don't really quite understand what that's all about either but it makes some of this work that I do a little bit of a challenge trying to find a clitoris on a girl you've never been with before. It's like you're feeling around for a long time and you never get to... F
come on. No one wants to start, there it goes. Like I was saying, what I like to do is install this so it's straight up and down. Just like this. And I can't tell you how nice it is to work with new meters that I don't have to worry about touching the plastic and it disintegrating. These lenses um, are not uh, UV tolerant by any means of the word. And we don't want to over tighten those because it'll break the meter. Um, usually between the combination of the cigarette smoke and the UV light that has hit these meters over the years, they have a tendency to be incredibly delicate. Like once you go and pull this plug out and put a new bulb in it, you go to put it back and that whole ring is disintegrated. Or just touching it like this. I try to avoid even doing that. Because sometimes your finger pressure is just enough to make it fall apart. This ground connection is also really important for some other portions of the metering circuit later. That's the other reason they want you to scuff that. Okay, so Okay, potentiometer, nut, and star washer. this. Oh, let's go back over to that bag we just pulled. Yep, we're going to need this part, which is an upgrade from the SB220. Bring that up to a proud 90. That's going to sit just like that. All right. Now I'm going to need this guy, which has no hardware. So let's go find the hardware. I'll talk to you guys in two hours. Yay. So we're almost off of page 27. We've got both of our meters now mounted up. Um, the point uh, zero 02 disc capacitors in the book, it says it wants us to go through. And I just showed me doing this, but silly me, forgot to have my microphone on and plugged in. Um, I took the disc capacitors and I went through the eyelets on the little trilog stand here. I went through the eyelets at the bottom, but what the manual wanted us to do is to go up through here. But I, this is cooler. This looks nicer, in my opinion. Um, the other thing is, is that everything in here is what they call hook and solder, okay, or, or loop, hook and loop. That's where you take the wire, you tin it, then you hook it, then you put it through the eyelet, then you pinch it tight, then you solder it, and then on top of that, we're coming back and we're covering each joint with heat activated epoxy heat shrink like here and this is Teflon and we're going to use Teflon wherever we can. So the only thing that I have left to do on page number 27 before I can jump on to page number 28, turn the page, this here, and all this is is adding just a couple wires and tying in the rest of this, this circuit. We're going to tie, it wants us to tie our ground here and not here. It's a difference between the SB220 and the 221. The 220 goes here. Anywho, um, God, normally I gotta be so careful with these wires that I don't break them. 
because they're all dry rotted. These are just like freaking new. This whole kit, everything in it is just like pristine. It's almost a little bit annoying. Almost. Almost. Let me get this little tool out. If you're gonna do something, put some artistic flair to it, you know what I mean? That's just me, my opinion. And you know opinions. Stay on the microfiber, Luke. You don't want to tear up those lenses. It'll be something to go through all this work. And then to flip the little or flip the faceplate over and see that you got a scratch right down the middle of your brand new meters. That would be what they call sucks. Come on. There we go. Okay. I'm serious now. I'm really looking for somebody that's got a a decent like 10,000 volt high pot tester. There's got to be a guy out there that's going to be like, oh, I want to support the channel, or man, I'd love to get in on this. And there's got to be a guy out there. There's got to be a guy out there. You know what I mean? So if you know of a dude, or you know a dude, or you know a dude that knows a dude, I'd really appreciate it. I really really would appreciate it. Okay, so let's black wire on top. So first off, trim these back just a hair. Pull that out of the way. Now, those of you that are new to watching this channel, you'd be like, wow, this guy is so quiet. Look, most of the time I am filling this quiet time with telling some funny story from my life, and it, it usually involves something wildly inappropriate, a little bit dirty. It just makes the time go by a little bit quicker. Um, I know everybody and their brother is going to watch, go in the hole, there you go, is going to watch this video. So I'm trying to be all prim and proper, so don't be confused when you go to some of my other videos that I'm 
talking a little bit of schmack and a little bit of game. Hook that puppy around. Now we're styling the gasoline. Okay. Sink that one around. Let's turn this around, make it a little bit easier for me. That's it. We've successfully completed every single thing on page 27. Above and beyond, we've act added our <sighs> bi-directional diode, and we added our safety diode, even though it's not in the instructions. We added our disc capacitors. We added all of that kind of stuff. So. Green and brown wires. Red, black, red, black. Okay, let me prep up for this and we'll move on to the next step. Well, we're at the age of, uh, <coughs> the end of the page of 28, 29, we're gonna start going to work on the chassis, the on off switches, the coax connectors, that kind of stuff. So, take a minute let's look at what we've created here so we really took our time we trimmed everything to the length that it needs to be our, our light wires um, disc capacitors like I said everything is hooked um, we haven't soldered these leads yet because, well, we haven't hooked up the leads from the board yet. Um, everything that is soldered is hooked and wrapped and hooked and covered. Went in and twisted up some wire. We've got heat shrink um, on all of our split joints to keep everything tight and neat. We've got heat shrink with epoxy on all of our joints on our mode switch and our sensitivity switch. I think we're pretty much set. I went ahead and I cut these leads a little bit long, and you're going to see why once we actually get the thing assembled. That comes in very handy for a couple steps down the road, which you guys are going to see. So that's it. The faceplate, as far as the stuff that's attached to it, is mostly completed. What we have left to do is put knobs on it, of course, and then get it mounted on. But front and back, that is about as pretty a wiring job as you're ever going to see. We hand tied this to our common our, um, sensitivity knob wire. Left a little bit of a slack loop here, slack loop here. So this is all free to move around and float and flex. But uh, I'm telling you, working with stranded wire, over the solid core wire that's normally in here. Kick ass, kick ass. Okay, well, we're gonna roll on out of here. This is uh, end of part two. Guys, I'm serious about the high pot tester. I'm desperately looking for one. If you guys know anyone, um, know of anyone, got a friend that could, just have them give me this, give me a call. And guys, I'm always here to answer all of your questions. 
Um, anything I can do to help. I want to give each and every single one of you guys a big thanks. And I appreciate you all for tuning in to check this out. We've got more to come. We're going to try to do pages 29 through probably 30 tomorrow. So, appreciate you all. Be well. Be respectful to each other. Try to help each other out. Remember, we're all in this hobby together. Big shout out to Siglent. Big shout out to Bird. And a big thanks to all of you. I'll see you. Bye.